Good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining me on this fine and wonderful June evening, right? June 27th, 2022. It's about 6 p.m. here in the central time zone. Uh, you could be watching us live or you could be watching us on a on the replay, and so it would certainly be a different day and time for you. So, but welcome. I'm certainly very happy to see you all here. And no matter what your preferred platform or time zone is, it's just great to see you here. And tonight's topic, we'll be talking about accepting change in a multiverse of change. It just seems like recently for for some reason that a lot of changing, a lot of situations are evolving and presenting themselves. But the reality is nothing has changed with all of the world and humanity, right? The same concerns, the same situations that we're facing today. They were here last week. They were here six months ago. They were here a hundred years ago. That hasn't, it hasn't changed. And so uh, sometimes it's just brought to the forefront because that is a little bit more in our immediate, um, in our immediate uh, purview or our immediate circumstances. And so before we begin our uh, talk tonight on accepting change in that multiverse of changing world, to a nice guided meditation on uh, accepting, right? Acceptance in that world of different perspectives, because that's what changes really occur from understanding or how we can help go through those and, and navigate changes in our lives by accepting other people's perspectives. So go ahead and let's take a moment Settle your body into a nice, comfortable position. You may close your eyes or keep them slightly open with a soft focus, looking downward, just a few feet in front of you. Go ahead and breathe in. However you choose, through your nostrils are fine. And then pause. And slowly exhale. And I invite you to allow a half smile to rest on your face as well. These are relaxing, nurturing meditations. And as you sit there, allow your spine to lift and your shoulders to soften. Sitting up nobly, but yet relaxed. And soften your belly as you continue to settle into your position. And breathe in. Pause. Slowly exhale. And then let's meditate on acceptance in a world of different perspectives. And bring to mind, if you will, someone you typically agree with. You don't need to agree with them all of the time, but maybe on most occasions you do. It could be a family member. It could be a coworker.
any person who is involved in your life that you typically agree with. When we agree with someone, what we're doing is really reinforcing our own way of thinking. Reinforcing a particular concept, a particular notion, or an idea about a particular way of thinking or acting. We are keeping a veil of judgment over what truly is. Now bring to mind, if you will, a particular time with that same person that you did not agree with them. Could be about a, a large purchase, perhaps. Or maybe it was a destination. Could be an intimate or a very personal decision. Or it could be simply about when to eat a meal. That decision was made that was best suited for that person at that particular time. Their perspective was different than ours. When we disagree with someone, we are reinforcing our own way of thinking and not accepting what truly is around us at that particular moment. We are keeping that veil of judgment over what truly is. Breathe in. Pause. Slowly breathe out. Now bring to mind a decision or a situation which you had no active participation in. And this could be a decision or situation that you either agree with or maybe even disagree with. Could be a decision that a higher up made at work. It 
could be a decision a neighbor made about their yard. It could be a decision a corporation made about a new policy. Perhaps it's even a political decision. And no matter what that decision was, it was one that you had no input on. And recall your reaction upon hearing what that decision was. When decisions of a large impact are made, some will be pleased, while others will be displeased. And it's important to accept what those changes are with openness and empathy. And breathe in. Pause. And slowly exhale. We also remember that acceptance is not the same as agreement. When we don't accept a circumstance, we are perpetuating our own idea, our own concept. and our own notion about how something should be and not to how it is. We are not accepting of perspectives different of ours. And in doing so, you're keeping a veil of judgment over what truly is. And we're not able to see clearly. And without clarity, we are not able to engage with ourselves. or with others. Or the world around us without mindful intent. Go ahead and begin to open your eyes and slowly reorientate yourselves to your surroundings before moving about. It's so good. Welcome. So everything 
that goes on around us is impermanent. A mountain range, our feelings, perhaps the home we live in, or even the lifestyle that we live. It's all impermanent. And these are <clears throat> this impermanence is one of the three conditions that the Buddha points out and characterizes all of life and is always present in permanence. And the Buddha has taught us that the source of all of our suffering, all of human suffering and discontent are the cravings and the clinging to things in this world that we've come to expect to be around forever. And that is a mistaken viewpoint to think that they are, that they will last forever. So that's what causes suffering. That holding, that craving, that attachment. That's what leads to the suffering that we experience. And craving for the way things were, or that attachment to the way things were, or non-acceptance, is perpetuating <clears throat> your suffering. And think about, think about, maybe if you're, a little older like me. Maybe you think about the old days in high school, right? Yesterday was better than today. Yesterday does not exist, nor does tomorrow. So things that do not exist can no, cannot be better than today. So typically we may hear people say, you know, or maybe you've said it, you know, I remember back in my day, you know, when we get older, we often long for those good old days. But that's a perspective, right? The good old days are simply a matter of perspective. What may have been a good time in your past may not have been a good time for someone else's past. And it's important to realize um that it's our perspective, our clinging, our attachments. That is what's perpetuating our suffering. For example, our bodies change. And we have no control over aging or sickness. And no matter what we tell our bodies to do, they will change. We will get older. Our bodies will eventually give out. We will die and they will eventually deteriorate as well. Right? Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. No matter how many creams or serums you use or protests you mount against your aging body, your body is impermanent as well. Mindsets change as well. And hopefully your viewpoint is not quite the same now as it was, you know, when you were younger. And so your viewpoint changes or alters also at different stages of your life. For example, when you're young, right, maybe you're a little bit more selfish or a little self-centered. That happens. Sometimes when we watch children play, right? 
It's all about them. Mine, mine, mine. There are some adults who still have that mindset. Mine, mine, mine. What about me all the time? So, but hopefully as you mature and experience the graciousness and the gratitude and the joyfulness of, of that's really out there, maybe hopefully you become a little bit more tolerant as you got older. Or as you get older. Laws and policies change too. Those certainly change. They certainly change, you know, very often depending on where you live. Some countries, maybe not as much. Other countries, maybe a little bit more. Some of those policies will, you know, be a little bit more noticeable. Maybe some not so much. You know, but they certainly change too. I mean, think about policy at your job. Right? Maybe for safety. Maybe you work in an environment where you have to wear some personal protective gear. Maybe they have to wear safety goggles all of a sudden or hearing protection. And you feel that, well, I didn't have to wear those hearing, you know, those, that hearing protection before, but now I do. It's a policy that, you know, is designed to prolong your hearing. Tax rates change, right? Inflation, fuel prices, social acceptance. That's a noticeable change as well, social acceptance. What may have been acceptable 100 years ago is certainly not acceptable these days most often. Kindness is always acceptable, right? But perhaps racial stereotypes, sexual stereotypes, separate but equal, not acceptable. And there were some that did not agree with some of the integration that took place back in the 1960s. So how do we adapt to change? One of the most important qualities a person can exhibit for adapting to change is open-mindedness. Your point of view is not exactly the same as others. There may be some that parallel to some degree, but no two people are exactly alike. So your point of view is not the same as everybody else's or even people in your circle. There are, will be some differences. We can view others with compassion and empathy. Understanding that others with different viewpoints, they have the same feelings as you. They all love, feel sadness when a loved one passes away. Fear when a new situation they may be uncomfortable with. Fear is probably one of the most dangerous conditions that we can experience that don't allow for open-mindedness. Whatever somebody else is feeling, those feelings are no more or less valid than yours. So that's where the empathy comes in. If it's a big change, 
And someone is fearful of that change. It's the uncertainty. Wanting to control the future that is uncontrollable, hasn't been written. So having compassion and empathy for what somebody else may be experiencing, that's open-mindedness as well. Putting yourself in their shoes to some degree. Think about what you can do. If you have to wear hearing protection at work, okay, you still have a job. You still have a place of employment where you can go and be a productive member of society in that sense, whatever the craft is that you're working on. Maybe you're working in a mill shop. Maybe you're working in a record store with a lot of loud music. Maybe you're a roadie for a band. I don't know. But you can still go to work. You're still helping people in some way. And at the very least, you're helping yourself, right? Earn a living. Maybe you're helping your family out. So think about the things you can do. Don't think about the things you cannot do. Accentuate. Identify the positive. That's how we accept change in a healthy way. And think about this too. Whatever those changes are, they're imp impermanent as well. They're not going to be there forever. You may not be there forever, right? You may find another job. Maybe if you're a roadie for a band, maybe, I don't know, maybe you go to a classical, a classical orchestra instead of a heavy metal band. I don't know. Well, let's think about what happens when we don't accept. Right? Remember, acceptance is not the same as agreement. Right? So when we don't accept, what happens to our bodies? Right? We get tense. We try to fight what's going on. We are clinging, clinging to a past that no longer exists. Right? We're keeping a, that veil of judgment over what truly is, and then we're not able to see clearly again. Right? We're holding on, trying to live in the past. And then again, without that clarity, we're not able to engage with ourselves, right, or others, or the world around us with that mindful intent we want to stay where we are and that does not allow us to move forward remember a river flowing right if there's a a rock or some obstacle in the way the river doesn't fight it it moves around it it goes with the flow right it accepts that that rock is there and it goes around doing its thing. So we can be like that river, non judgmental. So the world will always change around us. The same trials and tribulations that you face or society faces are the same trials and tribulations from. 100 years ago, 200 years ago. Sometimes just the names and the dates and the locations change. And very often it's the same suffering, wanting to hold on to something that is gone. So when we accept, we are able to see a situation mindfully, and without judgment. And we could move forward, helping people. So thank you for 
Joining us tonight, our next Dharma talk will be on the 27th, again, from 6 to 6.30 or so. Sometimes we go a little bit over. Well, that's cool, right? Uh, our next silent retreat is July 31st from 7.30 to 4.30. All of our events, all of our everything that we offer, from our sanghas to our retreats to our courses, they are all free. We just, uh, if you could make a donation, that's cool. We appreciate it, but it's not required. If you want to sit with us for a silent retreat, you come sit with us. If you want to take one of our courses, just hit the register button and sign up for the course. If you want to hit it, sit in any one of our weekly sanghas for veterans or for uh, new beginnings or rainbows or teens or healing sanghas, just register. Come, sit with us. That's why we're here. To help you develop your mindfulness so that you can help ease your suffering and perhaps maybe help ease the suffering of others as well. And if you do find our time here together positive and beneficial and rewarding and nurturing, please feel free to like and subscribe to our channel. And with that, my friends, I wish you all an evening of peace, ease, and well-being. <laughs>